is Africa the future? Do mm. you think Africa is the future? I think Africa has a future. I think Africa has a good future, mm -hmm. very positive future. It's a lot of possibility, a lot of promise, mm -hmm. um, especially, I think, because of how young most of Africa is, yeah. right? The youth culture, which again is full of promise and full of hope and full of good creativity and good ideas, mm -hmm. um, where the Western cultures tend to, they're aging, right? The population is shrinking, they're not having as many children. Um, and so I think certainly every place has a future, whether that future is, is promising, whether that future is used for, used for good and for benefit, okay. that I think is the question. Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Ambassador Vix, and I am back with another video. I just want to ask this question. Do you think that religion is one of the major causal factors of Africa's status of a developing continent? I'm saying this because I had a, a conversation with um, Kofi of Chicago, and Kofi was saying that we've traded off our resources and we're going in for the Bible. Because the chains are on our mind. They use religion to control us. When the white man came here, he had the Bible. We had the resources. Now he has the resources and we have the Bible. So I'm stressing on this to go into our main dialogue for today. But today I'm here with the Professor of Theology on Heritage Christian College. She's in the person of Professor Mindy Thompson. Hello, Prof. You're Hello. welcome. How are you? I am well, thank you. How is Africa treating you? It is very nice. It is beautiful and hot. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. But it is lovely. Okay. What brought you to Ghana? Um, so, I had the opportunity to join the faculty at Heritage Christian College. Okay. Um, and I have many friends and colleagues here that I respect okay. very much. Okay. And so when the um, opportunity opened for me to come to Ghana and to join the faculty full time, full -time. Um, I thought it was, it was God's leading to, uh, to okay. come and to join the work here. Okay. That is Professor Mindy Thompson, like I said. She is a professor of theology at Heritage Christian College. What motivated you to come to Heritage? Um, I think just the, the chance to uh, be an encouragement and equipping in a uh, majority world. Um, education in the United States okay. is um, declining. It's, it's under question. Okay. People, people are starting to, uh, to say, oh, you know, I can gain everything I need to know through uh, working on a job or having an internship okay. or gaining um, certificate skills. Why, why do I need okay. an education? Why do I need to pay all this money okay. for a school? And especially in theological education, mm -hmm. there is uh, a sense in the U.S. that, um, oh, I don't need to learn about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, you know, God will teach me everything I'll I need. Or... I can go and work in a church, and as long as I am an engaging speaker, um, then you know, then I, who needs who needs okay. training? And that is, um, it's uh, to the detriment of to the churches detriment. and okay. to the detriment of the people. Okay. And so, um, God is moving in Africa. God is moving um, and growing the churches here, mm -hmm. and um, really appreciate that people here understand the value of an education. People Good. here understand the need to gain not just specific skills, but also just critical thinking critical skills. Thinking. And particularly in my area of training people for ministry, mm -hmm. um, the churches here are hungry okay. for good theological grounding good. to understand the Bible better, to communicate it better. And so I think um, what educators in the U.S. have mm -hmm. is their, their knowledge and their experience and their wisdom. And those are things that are um, appreciated here. Okay. 
okay. and they see the value. And so I think that we owe to our brothers and sisters in Africa, okay. um, we owe them the to share the knowledge that we okay. have, to share the encouragement we have. So that's 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 what motivates me to come. Okay. I have this question that I, sure. I ask whoever I meet. Right. So far, the person is a white person. Ah. The worst thing the media mostly is preaches negative about Africa that has influenced people or has affected the kind of perception that the white people sure. have about Africans. Yeah. I'd like to know what were some of the perceptions that we are having when you're coming to Africa for the mm. first time. Right. Um, so the some of the, the stereotypes, right, the, the negative images um, have to do with uh, a developing country that you know, everyone lives in a grass hut mm -hmm. or um, you know everyone has malaria or you know there's widespread disease um and and those are some of the the Negative. misunderstandings okay. that people have of of africa or or other developing countries and so when i came first was in college mm -hmm. um, i was having an internship with pioneer bible translators okay. in guinea in guinea? west africa okay and um, the, the team that I worked with for the internship was very helpful before we came to um, help us know what to expect mm -hmm. and what to, what to, um, you know, how to, how to do well. Okay. Um, and, and they, we, we were in some places that had fewer resources. Okay. Um, we were in some places where we needed to pay attention to health and to sanitation things. Okay. But for the most part, the places we were, were, you know, were very welcoming okay. and, were, and were quite comfortable. And so that I think for anyone to have an opportunity to visit another place, to learn about a different culture, um, they, should, they should take advantage of that. It helps to expand, uh, expand your horizons. Okay. Um, when I was having a conversation with you, you told me that you've been in Ghana before, mm. right? Yes. And you've come to Ghana again. Right. What has made you like Ghana, what are some of the things that you've seen of which you, you are mm. impressed about Ghana? Sure. Well, I love the Ghanaian people, right? They're very, they're open, they're friendly, they're welcoming, um, they're eager to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I love the um, Ghanaian uh, sense of humor. Um, people always, you know, they're, they're, they're jovial, they want mm -hmm. to, to, to laugh together. Um, and that's, that's a lot of how I like to, okay. to live my life is okay. to be to be friendly and to be, friendly to be joking um teasing um in love right if you tease someone it's because you like them okay. um and so uh, so that's a lot of what what okay. attracted me and just the, the the ways that people um are committed to god and um and so full of joy okay. in um in their life and that's i think you know people in america have so much right physical things they have money they have stuff and yet they're not happy okay and so to to be in a place where people are choosing to be joyful they're choosing to 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 trust in god regardless of the circumstances that's a great encouragement to me okay let me uh, repeat this thing coffee mm -hmm. coffee of chicago yeah was saying that hey we've traded off our resources mm -hmm. we've given it to the white people and now we are having the bible they're having the gold mm. That has made us to be poor. What can you say about that? Um, I, I think there are different definitions of wealth and poverty, right? Okay. Some, some of them, of course, have to do with material goods. And there is certainly no denying in the history that white people have come to Africa and have plundered its resources, um, sometimes in the name of God, or sometimes claiming to be Christian, but mm -hmm. their actions um, showed more greed than, so than if, not. So, if I'm trying to understand what you're saying, mm. there are some white people who came to Africa or Ghana mm. claiming they are, they are priests or they are Christians, mm. but they are no Christians. Well, they don't act like Christians, right? They don't act. The, the Bible says wisdom is proved by her children. Okay. And so, if you really want to know if someone is truly a believer in God, how do they act, right? How do they treat people? How do they how do they care about others? Um, and and so that that's unfortunate. Um, that's been that's been some history. Okay. And the the ways that I think some uh, white people have come to Ghana have come to Africa in the past mm -hmm. have 
been um, mixed motivations, right? That there is a desire to do good, there's a desire to improve and to help people. And yet I think the, the assumption is that the white people know what is improvement or know what is needed. Oh, we must teach everyone English. Oh, we must, you know, give everyone the kind of education that we received. Oh, we must make everyone just like us. And that that somehow is, mm -hmm. is improvement. And that's not always true. Yeah. That's, that's not always what improves people. Mm -hmm. um, I think a, a better approach is to come and to share what we have together and to learn from each other. That there are things that you can teach me that I need to know that will help me be a better person, that will help me live differently, okay. more successfully. And there are things that I hopefully can teach others and, and also resources to share to help encourage. But I think first it's about learning, learning about the others instead of saying, you know, the, the Western missionaries came and they, they brought the Bible, mm -hmm. they brought Jesus, they brought God to the people um, in religion, which is, which is their goal but they also brought their culture and they did not understand how to separate, right? God is in every culture, mm -hmm. right? God transcends the cultures and the early missionaries did not understand how to bring God apart from their culture or how to really help enculturate okay. the Bible into the culture where they were going. Um, which is which is too, which is too bad. There's, uh, that's a detriment to mm -hmm. the message. I think today, more people who are studying missions understand the influence of culture, and understand the differences between what is really of God, and what is perhaps rooted in my culture or in my assumptions from my homeland. That may not be what's best for right. If God thought that American culture was best for everyone, everyone would be like the Americans. And I don't think that's what God wants. I don't think that's what God intends. And American people are fond of telling Africans that, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. Mm. If you want us to help you, this is what you're supposed to do. Is that the right way? Um, I think, again, there is this assumption that the way I see it or the way I would do it is the right way. Okay. And, and for some people, the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. And so when someone comes and lays restrictions, oh, I will help you, but first. Do this. Do this, do this, do this. Um, and oftentimes the things that they're asking are, make yourself like me. Make Is it the yourself. right way? And, and I don't think so. I, don't, I think, you know, um, everyone does what they believe is right, mm -hmm. but God knows the heart. Okay. And so I think it's more useful to, to first come and to listen, to learn, to say, this is different to me. Help me understand why this is different. Mm -hmm. Help me understand why this is important to, you know, help me understand the things that are important to you mm -hmm. and why they are important. And so if you understand the values, if you understand the thoughts that form the basis of the, the beliefs and the actions mm -hmm. that I think can help you understand why someone would do something a certain way or why someone would think a certain way about things, even if it's not the way that you would see it. Okay, okay. Some people have the belief that we need to, you know, religion is having a negative impact on mm -hmm. the continent. Yeah, they believe that in as much as religion has to do with believing the supernatural, that someone out there who's going to provide for you, mm -hmm. religion has caused Africans to be lazy and for that matter, it has made us poor. Hmm. Do you think so? Um, again, I think there are different kinds of poverty, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone believes in something, yes? Whether what you believe in is God or what you believe in is money or power or influence, right? Everyone worships something. Mm -hmm. And so what people choose to worship what people choose to serve mm -hmm. with their life mm -hmm. is borne out by their actions, is borne out by the decisions they make, okay. the ways they invest themselves. And so certain religious beliefs, I think, can again bring along different, different values and different assumptions without really understanding why you do those things, right? Okay. 
why why do I go to church every Sunday? What does it do for me? Mm -hmm. Why do I read the Bible? What is that about? And what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. If I am doing these things, what will I receive for it? So you think that most people or some people don't know the essence of religion? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What is happening to you? Let us go into the economic sure. aspect of religion. Yeah. I'm interested in that. Mm. You know, now religion in Africa or in Ghana mm -hmm. has turned into a business. Yeah. People giving money to the churches. Uh, it's not just duping in, people. It's not just in Ghana, unfortunately. Uh huh. So yeah, there, I mean, there are many places where, um, the, uh, in the name of God or in the, the name, name of, of a particular church or in the name of a particular church leader. That's good. Wants our money. People, yeah, would say, oh, you know, give for this or give to that, um, and, uh, you know. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians, right? Some preach Christ out of false motives. Mm -hmm. Some preach Christ out of ambition or competition. Okay. Um, but others preach Christ from true motives. And God is the one who knows everyone's heart and knows their, their motivations. But certainly, in I think in every place you can see people who are using religion using right oh you know send send me money and i'll pray for your, your healing or um you know send me your goods and you'll receive this or that and okay. and i think that makes god really sad that um, okay you know the apostle paul said again in acts right I, that you think you could um you could you know use god for for your own gain there okay. was a, 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 a um lms who came to hear about Christ, he was, he was a sorcerer, he was a, a magician, and he came to Paul and said, you know, help me learn how to, how to preach Christ. Mm -hmm. And Paul had said, you know, had, had nothing to do with him and said, how could you think mm -hmm. that you could trade, right? He offered him money, you know, here, I'll pay you so you can help me to, to do this. So even from the very beginnings of the church, people have tried to use the faith to their advantage, advantage. Um, which is that's human nature sometimes and selfishness without really understanding right. the true benefit of, of, of the faith in God. Okay. As someone, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an economist, okay? Right. I believe that Ghana as mm -hmm. a country, the reason why we are not having the actual value to our resources is that we don't add value to mm. our resources. What do you think Ghana or Africa will add value to their resources? as compared to what the American or European countries are doing. If we add value to our resources, take hostage of our resources and make good use of them, mm. what do you think would have, what impact would it have on the other Western countries? Sure. Um, so I am not an economist. <laughs> so I have much to learn from mm. you. But I think the, the, the perspectives on resources generally fall in so ex two extremes, right? Mm. The perspective on resources, that resources are limited, there's a finite amount, there's only this much. And so I have to take all that I can mm -hmm. of the resources for me mm -hmm. before, they, before they run out. Mm -hmm. And that's right, that's greed, that's, that greed. that's pride, that's, that's a closed, right, that's a closed hand okay. toward others. Um, and then the opposite extreme you know, there's limitless resources and there's enough for everyone if we're willing to share. And so we, we work together and we and everyone benefits, right? And some people would call that generosity. Some people would call that foolishness. <laughs> um, and so I think the answer, really, uh, as with most things, the answer is is somewhere between those two extremes, right? Okay. That you, you understand the resources that are available you understand that some resources are more easily renewed or more easily expanded than other resources. Okay. And so you try to use them in such a way that you are a good steward of those materials, not just for your own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. That's one of the things I really love about um, African cultural perceptions which are more focused on community, yes. right? The, the, what is the phrase Ubuntu, right? I am because we are. Yeah. And so the, the understanding of what benefits the whole is more important 
Got and it. what benefits an individual. Okay. Um, and if if I if I could help Western cultures learn anything, it's about that sense of community, that sense of of we all benefit okay. together more than when one individual is taking Take everything it. and hoarding it. You know, I like asking this question. Mm. I met um, Natalie yeah. and I met Yanis. I asked them this question. Mm. Is Africa the future? Do mm. you think Africa is the future? I think Africa has a future. I think Africa has a good future, mm -hmm. a very positive future. It's a lot of possibility, a lot of promise, mm -hmm. um, especially, I think, because of how young most of Africa is, yeah. right? The youth culture, which again is full of promise and full of hope and full of good creativity and good ideas, mm -hmm. um, where the Western cultures tend to, they're aging, right? The population is shrinking, they're not having as many children. Um, and so I think certainly every place has a future, whether that future is, is promising, whether that future is used for, used for good and for benefit. That okay. I think is the question. Okay. But I, I really believe in the future in Ghana or I would not be here. Great. She believes in the future of Ghana. What is your last message mm. to Africans, mm. non-Africans watching us right now? So I want to encourage all those that I encounter to make sure that their actions are confirming the beliefs that they claim. Um, and especially for me as someone who trains people in, in the faith, who trains people in religion, want to encourage my students to make sure that their faith is more than just the things they say with their lips, but it is the thing that really influences their sense of identity and is the, the thing that shapes, shapes their actions and shapes the way they live their life. All right. Thank you so much, <laughs> Professor Thompson. It is I, my pleasure. I have the belief that Heritage Christian College are so much lucky mm. to have you here. They're going to learn a lot well, from you. Thank right. you. I feel very lucky to be here as well. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. All right. I believe you enjoyed this whole episode of Africa Inside on Vice TV. If you like this sort of content, positive content coming from our very own people, kindly subscribe to the channel, comment, you like, and you share. Once again, my name is Ambassador Vix. See you next time.